Hey everybody, this is David at Barnyard Bees. Today is January 21st. It's about 25 degrees. And last night, I believe it got down to 15. And if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the coldest day of the year so far here in, in North Georgia, in Chatsworth, Georgia. Uh, if you would leave in the comments, in your part of the country, what's the coldest, I just wanna say, what's the coldest, it's got where you're at the low. I would like to hear what the low is wherever you're at in the country or out of this country. Whether it's Australia or England or uh, California or New York, wherever, L let us know. I'm interested to, to see. What I wanted to show you today, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through some of these, uh, these hives that have old wax. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut the wax out we're going to render it down, melt it down, whatever you want to call it, and clean it up. And I'm going to show you how we do that. You can see it in case uh, some of you new beekeepers know what to look out for next year. See these frames right here at the end. That's wax moth uh, uh, larva or eggs, whatever you want to call them. Cocoons that they drill on the, uh, they place on the side of your wood. And when you peel the wood off, they actually, you can see where they actually eat into the wood there. And these will, of course, hatch out into uh, like a larvae, big grub-looking worm. Larva are, are much bigger than uh, hive beetle larva. Hive beetle larva kind of resemble, if you've ever seen, a maggot. They're about that size. Uh, maybe, you know, a young maggot, uh, where these are probably a good, some of them a good half inch long when they hatch out. And they go through your, through your, uh, your wax, spin in their nasty cocoon all through, and they, they demolish and destroy everything like that. So what we're going to do, uh, there's my bucket, and I'll take my hive tool. And, and this is a plastic frame, of course, and all I'm going to do is just scrape it like so, right down in the bucket, and this will beat everything going in there. The old nasty wax, the cones, everything will be scraped into this bucket. And then you can see how nasty that looks. And I won't go on to keep showing you this because this is just repetitive over and over and over. I'll get through each hive and do the same thing with this. So, so what I do, I mean, I'll clean this up a little bit. I'll scrape off the eggs that have already hatched. It's just the, the cocoon that's left. And this right here will make as a starter strip. I may trim that down just a little bit and just leave just like this right here. And just leave, see, it's very cold out, so that wax is not soft at all. So it's chipping off very, very easy. So if you just have a remnant of wax left on it, just like that, that's all you need. Good enough. And that will will make as a starter strip, instead of using a starter strip, use this frame. I'll use this next year. And here's here's another one right here. And usually what I do, I'll show you one more on this. This is a one that just has had a starter strip and fishing line. Uh, it's basically just just cut it out, fishing line and all. It's a, it's as simple as that. You cut right through the fishing line. And then there's your wax left over. So, so there you go. There's your big slab of wax. So that goes right in together with that. Of course, I'm going to pull this plastic out. Don't think I'm going to melt the plastic down. <laughs> Just go scrape it off. And all that nasty wax that you see right there, I'll show you how to clean it up into a real clean, pretty looking wax that you can make a lot of stuff with. And it'll be high quality wax. So that'll be our next step. Okay, I'm back inside out of the cold and it, it was freezing out there. Oh, there's a, there's our cat, Ginger. He is a boy cat. <laughs> He's our inside cat. We've got another one in there somewhere. But anyway, here's our wax and he's investigating it. Uh, there's quite a bit here. That's not a five gallon bucket. Uh, this is probably a seven gallon or eight gallon bucket. It, it's, I'm thinking maybe eight. It's a pretty good sized bucket. 
So what I'm gonna do over here, scroll over to the stove. Here's, uh, it's this is an old canner that I've had for years. And I have about, about three inches of water in the bottom of it. And that should be enough. We'll see once I start adding it, if I need to put any more water. But usually you just, you just need a little bit of water in the bottom and then you'll be surprised how much of that bucket we can squeeze in here because once it starts melting it just it just keeps going down and going down of course we won't do the whole bucket i'll just do a little bit of it and then i'll show you you know our end result okay there's that bucket i managed to get that whole bucket in there and i'll show you how full it is now right there it is it's nasty looking it's dirty it's got fishing line in it it's got wax moth uh debris and uh hive beetle dead bees uh every uh, leaves everything imaginable in there and so keep this in mind when you go to keep your wax don't think you got to keep the prettiest pieces out in your yard because you don't have to this is what you keep everything when you scrape out a uh, burr comb keep your bucket out there in the, in the yard with a lid on it where you can keep the wax moss out, preferably one of those you can get them at a Lowe's or Home Depot that has a screw on lid. Throw your wax in there, close it up, keep everything out of it. And when you get you enough build up, then melt it down and make a variety of stuff with this. I mean, waxes, I mean, you can make uh, candles, uh, creams. I, I use it to make our comfrey salve with. Once this is all melted down, I'll take this strainer here that's been used for wax before you can tell how dirty it is and I'll, I'll sift through and I'll pick it up and I'll push out what I can back into the to the water and I'll keep doing that and that'll pick up that'll separate the big stuff the bad bugs and everything that's not melt that won't, that's not melted this is almost like a pre-filter to it just in a couple minutes you can see how much that went down now that was that whole eight gallon or seven gallon however many gallon that was but as it was uh, heating up I would just kept pushing it down kept pushing it down and now we're almost half size of this canner so what I'll do now I'll add a little bit of water to it the water acts as a filter as well so what happens it, it, it cleans it it cleans it so all the bad stuff the debris and everything will go to the bottom and the wax will float to the top and i mean it's nasty looking in there look at that that's it it looks horrible it don't look like you would keep any of that but i'm telling you keep all your wax regardless of what it looks like unless it has pesticide damage or something like that uh you know uh otherwise keep every bit of it don't throw it away don't throw it on the ground throwing it on the ground is a bad idea is because it will attract more hive beetles Cause it's almost like you're throwing bait on outside to them and saying, Hey, come, come get my wax and wax moths. They'll smell it better. You don't. So whatever you do, do not throw it on the ground or propolis or anything like that. Because, and, and then too, it's nasty when you step on it and then you come in the house and it's all in your shoes and you get it in your carpet and rugs. It's best just to collect it, get in a habit of taking your time, uh, put it in a bucket, seal it up. And then, then if some reason you don't want it, you know, give it to somebody. I hate to say you throw it away or, you know, melt it down. So that's what we're doing. And we'll just keep waiting here and get back with you. It's heated up really good. And most of it's melted and it should be melted because I've had it uh, simmer on there quite a bit. It looks nasty. So what you do for your first clean now, I recommend be very careful unless you want to get in some big trouble with your wife. Uh, I put like an old towel here because what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this strainer, dip it in, and then lead it over here and drop the, the trash into this bucket right here. And I, I'll only be able to do this a couple times because it's going to be hard to do one-handed. But what I do, I dip it like this and then... See, it's got fishing line in it. It's got everything. And I let that strain out. And also, I can't do it because I'm one-handed here. I'll take that spatula and I'll push down on that. On that top and push that stuff down into the out. 
and I'll dump that out. So let me go ahead and, and do this and then I'll get back with you. Okay, we're getting down to the last little bit of it. Uh, we got most of the big stuff out. So what I'm doing now when I dip, I'm not getting a whole lot, but getting a little, I'll bring it up. You can see it's getting very little now, where before it was getting huge amounts of debris. And so what you can do now is just go in several times like that with the same scoop and twirl around a little bit. And you can see it's come right down to the, the, the most of that that I can get anyway. Stir it around a little bit like that. And just keep dipping. I'll probably get this dipping maybe one more. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the fire off, the heat. And we're going to let that dry, uh, cool. And the, the wax will float to the top. And this will be our first clean right here. And I'll show you the bucket here in a second. Get a couple more dips here. And usually once you get down to this point, you can just see how it just a little bit accumulates. So I'm going to throw it back in there and toss it around a little bit. You can push down on them if you want to. Reach in there and stir it around if you want. Okay, here's our bucket, and there's all the crud in there. There's quite a quite a bit in there. They had a little, did lose a little bit of wax in there, but that's kind of getting in a hurry. You can you can go slower and uh, do a better job than that. That's kind of in a hurry here. So I'll turn it off, and then we'll get back to you after this cools down, and we'll do the second clean. Okay, here's what we ended up with. After this, this is set overnight. It don't have to. It's just, I ran out of time yesterday, so I was going to resume the video today. But as soon as that wax hardens up, you can uh, you can resume, you know, pull it out. But what, what you'll have here is, I'll probably have to dump this out, is a lot of nasty water. What I'll do, I'll just dump it out on the ground, make it easier here. See how nasty and dirty that is. And then, then you'll have your, your chunk of wax. So, so what I do, I'll take a spoon and scrape all that stuff off. Try to get some of that sludge off of there. There's ice froze on it. Let it down just for a second, dump this out. And I'll take it inside and Start cleaning it up and show you what we're doing in there. Okay, I got it in the sink. And here's the wax. You can see this is the cleaner side. This is That was the underside that was facing down towards the kettle. Now what I do is I just take like a spoon. Works really good. I like it. And what you do, you just, you're just going to scrape. Now I do have a, a strainer that none of this will get through. And I'll make sure none of this gets dumped in the sink. So be careful. Don't plug your sink up. And you just keep scraping and scraping, and I'll just keep doing that, and then I'll get back with you. Okay, after scraping for a long time, that is the top side. I scraped it a little bit, and there, this was the real bad side here. You can see a big difference. You can't get all of it off. So, so what you got to do is you, you put fresh new water in your kettle. By this time, the kettle's really nasty, but there's no need to clean it up until you're done. So what I do, I just put my wax back in the boiling water. And uh, another thing I didn't talk about before, with your temperature of your water, be kind of moderate with it. Don't I get it on high to get it hot. But once you see it starting to melt down, bump it down. I usually put mine on about uh, three or four uh, that way it doesn't degrade the wax as much and it comes out of better quality and a brighter yellow. It's about melted down. This is all that's left of it right here. And you can see how nasty and dirty that water's getting again. Once you get to this point right here and you just have that much left, you could go ahead and show. I still have it on high because it's not even started to boil yet. But, the, you know, the water was starting out not real hot. So, and we'll, and we'll see what happens. All this wax, it all comes to the top every time. 
And when it hardens, all, all you have left is dirty water underneath of it and the wax on top. And that's how, the, how you, you clean the wax. That's how it gets clean every time. And each process, every time you do this, it just gets cleaner and cleaner to where the last one, and it'll look really nice and yellow. I see it's just about, just that little sliver right there left. Now, as soon as all the wax is done, I take it off the heat immediately. So it won't overheat, and I'll reach in here for the last time with this. This will be the last time I use this. And it'll just take one scoop here to get the last of what's in there that's big. So that way it doesn't clump up. Now, don't worry about skimming down what in the bottom because what's in the bottom is going to stay there anyway. So just leave it. Don't try to dip down in your wax. You're just going to use this just to skim off the top on this one run right here. And see, you can see I picked up a little bit, not much. Just a little bit of the big stuff left. Do that a few times and then I'll set it outside and we'll let it cool down and harden and then we'll do it again in a minute. Okay, you can see how it looks. This step has even got cleaner. The water, you know, the underside is going to have to, it's still, the water's still hot, so I'm going to have to dump it out. And the other side will look worse, but you can tell just by looking at the front side here how much cleaner it looks. And while it's still kind of a little bit wet, it's going to be easier to scrape. So the first scrape was kind of hard because I, I let it set out here overnight, had ice on it. But when it's warm like this, that's really the best time to scrape off that propolis. So let's get the water dumped out and we'll get it in or scrape it again. Okay, here's the here's the, the upper side, which looks really good. Now the back side still looks a little bit rough, but it's not as thick. And most of that will just you do the same thing. You just scrape it. Okay, here's the wax going in again. It's looking pretty clean. Back in the water it goes. And again, just to heat it enough just to melt it. All right, this is the last one I'm going to do. And you can see how yellow that is, how clean it looks. Now, you can keep doing this. If you want it cleaner, you can. There's a little bit of bubbles right there. It's not uh, debris. Now, the other side's going to be a little bit dirty. The underside always is. And you take your spoon and you scrape it down. And after you scrape it down, it'll look just like this. So that's about it. That's how you uh, clean wax. And we'll show in another video in the future uh, how you can make some foundation with it. But uh, don't forget, folks, barnyard bees. We have packages, nukes, uh, beekeeping supplies at barnyardbees.com. Uh, if you haven't got your equipment yet, get on a ball and get it. Whether you buy it from us or, or whoever, you need to have your stuff uh, bought and painted. If your boxes or frames put together, whatever you need to do. Uh, we're at the end of January. Before you know, we're in February and the, and the red maple's blooming. So, so that's about it, folks. Don't forget, click on the little bell. Please help share our videos. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Barnyard Beast.